All right. First of all, I want to thank Visit Concord for having me here. I'm very excited to be in your community and most excited to get Accessible Concord underway. Um, before we begin, I want to tell you a few things about the presentation. Um, first of all, I am a hospitality industry professional, not an autism professional. I started as a front desk associate, moved up into sales, eventually a general manager, meeting planner, and worked for my local convention and visitors bureau selling conventions. So when this program was completed or um, written for sensory training, it was written with the assistance of autism professionals, families, um, individuals with sensory sensitivities, so that it would be the most holistic a well-informed presentation we could do. Because not everyone can sit in this presentation and may or may not see this video once we're ultimately completed, um, there are very wordy slides here. So it can be emailed, printed out, shared with others. So we're not gonna read every single word, just know that you can get a copy of it so that you can read it if need be. So let's jump in. All right, so we're gonna talk about sensory sensitivities and oftentimes we interchangeably will use the words autism spectrum and sensory sensitivities because we're not only looking to appeal to families who have a family member on the autism spectrum but also potentially those with PTSD, Alzheimer's, dementia, um, other conditions that would cause a sensory sensitivity. So when this program was written not being an autism professional, being a hospitality industry professional, the very first thing that I did was look up a definition for autism. And this is what I found. So autism or autism spectrum disorder refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, the things that you've probably seen in a very kind of pop culture television way, the, the things that you most notably um, see represented in autism. The CDC actually just adjusted the number of occurrences uh, of autism in children under the age of 16, and the number is now one in 44. When I first wrote this presentation two years ago at the, at the midst of COVID, um, the number was one in 52. So it's increased just over the last two years as far as CDC tracking. Um, so that's 2% of American children with some sort of de developmental disability. Here was the part that I found really interesting, particularly as it relates to the hospitality industry. The definition that said that autism is often accompanied by sensory sensitivities, including anxiety, depression, and attention issues. And I thought, who more than the hospitality <laughs> industry as a whole has experienced anxiety, attention issues, or depression over the last few years? It's been a rough go. So if you think about sensory sensitivities in this framework, it could eventually affect everyone at one point in their lives. So we're not talking about a narrow portion of the population when we talk about these sensitivities. All right, this number was huge to me. I am at my core a tourism marketing nerd, um, and I like to know about populations I am not speaking to or potential clients that I am not reaching. So these are the statistics. There are 20 million families in North America, and that's not individuals, that's families. Parents who are the parents to at least one child on the spectrum, sometimes more. I have had families who have used my program back home where this began that had three children in their family, all with some sort of diagnosis. So this is 20 million families. When those families were asked, do you travel with your loved one on the autism spectrum? 87% said no. But when they were asked, would you, if there were autism friendly options, 93% said yes. So 93% of 20 million people, families, who are not currently traveling and no one is marketing to or speaking to. So that's a huge number of people. We reached out to uh, an advisory council, which gave us some of their actual travel experiences to draw from so that we could improve upon the way services are delivered. So one of our advisory council service members is uh, an autism professional. She has an adult son. He's 18. He attends the University of Alabama in Huntsville. He drives a car. And so from his outward appearance, he may not look like he has a disability of any kind, but he is on the autism spectrum. 
So uh, she would uh, recount to us some experiences from when they traveled when he was young. For instance, he loved the botanical gardens, loved them, but he only liked to go where he wanted to go when he wanted to go within the garden in the order he wanted to see it. And he loved going to space camp and aviation challenges and these educational type experiences. But he had to have a, um, a crew trainer or a camp counselor who understood that he could have some challenging behaviors and have very rigid ways of thinking. And the, the one thing that really stuck with me when I was listening to her stories was this, this particular one. Once when they were staying at a property, there was a fire alarm that went off. And for the remainder of their time, he was excessively worried that there would be a fire. Now this struck home with me because I, and this certainly doesn't apply to everyone, but I have worked at properties undergoing renovations or with older um, fire systems that the fire alarm would go off on a regular basis. And though we really considered it an annoyance and an inconvenience to our guests, an inconvenience to our guests, it never occurred to me that it could derail someone's vacation experience for the remainder of their time in this way. So this was really eye-opening to me. Now we're gonna look at this video. This is just like a short minute and a half video uh, of a young boy in a public space uh, experiencing what it is like to travel through the world on the spectrum and what uh, outside uh, triggers and influences of sensory overload can you can experience. I'm autistic and I just get too much information. Now, after having seen that video, can you think of some things in the hotel world or in our attraction spaces that might um, be sensory triggers for someone who is traveling through the world like this? I mean, let's talk about it. We're already unfamiliar surroundings. If someone's on vacation, they're in a brand new place they've never been in before. There are other guests. Uh, what about those family reunions checking in or ball teams checking in um, and, and crowding the lobby and, and pushing and shoving and excited to see one another? There's bright lighting. There has to be. The health department says we have to have it. Uh, a lot of properties have signature scents that they pump into the lobby or there's music in the lobby or there's a restaurant and bar with a clattering of dishes. So hotels and attractions are just in, you know, by their very nature can be unwelcoming to someone with sensory sensitivities and there's really nothing that we can do about it. So how do we develop strategies around it is how we're gonna think going forward. But before we do that, I wanna look at these couple of TikTok videos. So TikTok is a great resource if you're interested in looking into some personal experiences from the autism community. There are some great accounts that, that are very educational more than just entertaining. So this uh, first one is Abby, and I want you to think about what she says about her utilizing the pool at, and how that would experience be the experience for someone at your property. Um, who knew that your amenities that you offer to guests can also uh, be sensory uh, benefits to someone one on the autism spectrum. So what did you just say about being in water? It's sensory needs. So how do you feel? I feel nice and re relaxed. It's like pressure. Okay, right. So it's deep pressure, right? Do you, like when I'm in the deep end like, and I go to the bottom, it feels extra sensory needs. So it makes you feel good. Yeah. 
Because those are those are some of my sensory needs. Right. You have a lot of sensory needs or a little? What do you think? A little bit. Not as much as I used to. So it's, it's gone down a little bit, but you still need sensory input, right? Yeah. Working out's another one. That What does that do? Keeps me focused. I, I think I took an, an adaptive PE class. That really helped. Right. Adaptive physical education when you were in high school, right? Regular PE. I think at Dixie Canyon, I had to get pulled out of class. For adaptive PE? Yeah. Okay. So how and do I you... did not want to do it. Do you have any advice for parents of kids that have lots of sensory needs? I'm not sure because when I was little, I used to go put everything in my mouth. You did. That was called tactile input. I would put sand, rocks, leaves, yeah. rabbit poop. <laughs> that is true, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, the second video is a dining experience, and um, I'll, I'll I'll tell you more about it at the end. I was just saying I was considering wearing headphones because I'm hungry and I'm grumpy, and it's like worse when I'm hungry because in the like in, in the autistic brain, the center where your like where your hearing is perceived, where sound is perceived, it crosses over where pain is perceived, and that's why loud noises are painful. That's why that's why it hurts. It's not necessarily that I have better hearing. I mean, I'm not really getting stabbed in the ear holes, but it feels like I'm being stabbed in the ear holes. So that's why often people cover their ears because it hurts. It does hurt because it's crossed with where you're perceiving pain. So it, your brain perceives the sound as pain. I found this video in particular so interesting because it really, I never knew this information. I didn't understand that noise isn't just an annoyance. It's actually physically painful because of this special wiring of the brain. So between these videos and the things that we talked about in a hotel and the little boy, you can see that it's just sensory overload all the time. The inability to filter what information you take in and what you ignore. So it is just sensory overload. And we have to, once again, we can't work around the things that are happening in our properties, but we can have strategies to deal with them. We have to, once again, we can't work around the things that are happening in our properties, but we can have strategies to deal with them. So here are some family strategies that are recommended, and we'll talk about how we can pivot and utilize these in our businesses. So first of all, families, it's recommended that they create a quiet space for calming down when someone is having one of those spin out moments. Visit a new place at quiet times. That's why this is great off-season business to cater to these families. Uh, to try earplugs or noise-canceling headphones to help with sound sensitivities. To wait times can be challenging, th so think about pre-ordering meals when visiting a restaurant so that you can just grab your meal and go versus having to wait because wait times can be, can be difficult. And then lastly, when we talk about all of these anxieties and sensory overloads, though some people need to retreat from them, Others with sensory sensitivities need to expel that energy somehow. And that is why fidget devices exist for that very purpose. So here's how you can participate in Accessible Concord and, um, and be a part of sensory sensitivity in your community as far as improving service delivery to families. You complete till today's training. Super quick, um, we're almost done. So it's a quick little training just to make you much more aware. Receive the sensory kit that has been curated for you by the folks at Visit Concord. Pass this training on to your team members who um, cannot necessarily be at this video or who have not attended an in-person training. Just make sure that everyone is aware. Create a rate code for the program. Now, this is um, not for any purpose, no discount. Um, there's no percentage off needed. The, really the only reason for the create a rate code, if it's possible to do so at your location, is for a heads up to your staff on the front lines. Just like an incoming reservation might say Boeing or Toyota or Texaco or whomever, um, this will say Accessible Concord or some, Visit Concord or some other variation that makes sense to you so that when that room reservation comes up and you see that rate code, it's a trigger in your brain to know that they are with this program and need to be offered a sensory kit. 
Now, I will say when offering sensory kits, we don't need an elaborate um, presentation. This can be a real quick presentation where you offer the sensory kit and you say, here's what's contained in it, these items for these purposes, which we'll go over in a minute. Or, and you're welcome to use any or all of them or none of them. Do you need to utilize any of these items? They are property of the hotel and you can return them after their stay or leave them in your room. And that's really all that we're asking as far as offering the sensory kit. Nothing super complicated. We try to make this as easy as possible. And then Accessible Concord, Visit Concord folks are going to um, add a listing that shows that you've been uh, sensory sensitivity trained and aware on um, their landing page for Accessible Concord. So you will show that you are part of their program and that will help um, families who have a sensory sensitivity know to be directed to your property. Um, and just once again, I wanna reiterate that sensory sensitivities are not autism spectrum solely. We're talking about PTSD, um, Alzheimer's, anxiety, any sort of sensory sensitivity that someone might be experiencing. Then you'll receive periodic updates from Visit Concord as new information is available or they find new interesting educational videos or I share those with them so that you can just stay up to date um, with the latest offerings within your community and across the world. And then you're gonna be promoted through Visit Concord. They're going to really actively promote the accessibility of this community to travelers across the country and across the world for that matter. And then you'll renew annually just by going through this training again and sending new team members through the training because, you know, sometimes we tend to change staff a little bit. And so you wanna make sure that everybody who's working at your property is up to date just as they have to be on your brand standards and other initiatives. A part that we're looking at in the future and that I currently utilize in my own program um, in Alabama where it was created is the Practice Stay program. I'll be working with the folks at Visit Concord to seek out some grant funding in order to reach out to families in the area or across the state to actually come in and stay in your um, sensory trained properties and the grant funds will pay for that. So it's actually tangible revenue, heads in beds or guests in your attractions, um, hopefully grant funded. So we're working on that part of it. Um, um, but stay tuned so that we hope that that's an initiative that they can that they can continue forward with all right here's what's going to be in your sensory kits you'll have a carrying case that's much prettier than this one you see here it actually says visit Concord on it it's quite lovely some sunglasses for someone who may have sensitivities to light and brightness there is a weighted blanket this is a seven pound weighted blanket the um, recommendation through physicians and professionals is 10% of the total body weight. Because it's not possible for you to have a blanket for 10% of every human being's body weight, we went for one that was light enough to not be dangerous for small children, but heavy enough that it would at least provide some comfort to an adult. So it's seven pounds and this blanket can go through commercial laundry and is the color gray so that hopefully it stands out amongst your other linens. The, then you'll have ear protectors. These are not headphones. They do not play music. They simply protect the ears from loud sounds in your space. Then you'll have an assortment of fidget devices. The fine folks at Visit Concord have gotten a lot of variety, and so you'll have a, um, a lot of variety on fidget devices, and they'll have plenty to hopefully um, add to your kits should these uh, become damaged or disappear, as things sometimes do. Because I know it's important in a hotel and that we're not trying to add more work on you, these items have all been selected because they can be wiped down with a Lysol or Clorox wipe. And as I said, the blanket can go through commercial laundry. So this is easy sanitation and cleaning for use by the next individual. Once again, if you, if you have items go missing from your kits or they're accidentally taken by guests, just contact the folks at Visit Concord for a replacement so we can make sure that you have the supplies that you need to execute the program fully. Now here are some additional items that you'll find within your kits, but these are to stay at the front desk and loaned out as needed. And here's why. The first item is a small dry erase board. This is so that you can communicate with non-verbal guests. Not just those who are utilizing this program, any guests. Let's say the California Association of the Deaf and Blind are staying with you and you have a deaf guest who is non-verbal. This is a much easier way than a little post-it note to communicate with that guest to get them taken care of. 
The next set is a set of communication cards. These are basic phrases and are designed for children who may be nonverbal in case they get separated from mom or dad. They're simple, I need help, yes, no, I wanna go home, I'm hurt, um, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, so basic communication cards to try to communicate with a nonverbal guest. And then the last item is one that I can't believe we haven't had in hotels for decades. It is a white noise machine. And yes, though we can utilize our cell phones for that, you never want the concern that it's gonna wear your battery down or offset an alarm that's important or anything like that. So these are loner white noise machines that any guest can utilize who is having trouble sleeping near that ice machine or that elevator or noisy neighbors. And these are all at the front desk and you can determine how you wish to sign these out to guests in addition to the sensory kits just so it's easier for you to track their location. There's also going to be a card within the sensory kit that explains what the items are, what they're utilized for that's either for you or the guest, your team or the guest, and it explains that it is property of the hotel and can be turned in at the front desk or left in the room. So that is included in the bags as well. Here are a few above and beyond measures, and you can choose to do with this information what you will. So create a quiet zone or a chill space or somewhere in your property. So imagine you have a lobby full of people checking in and there's a softball tournament or something going on and you have a family that someone is clearly having a moment. Whether that's just somebody who's traveled for eight hours and ex is exhausted or they're actually someone with a sensory sensitivity. Do you have an empty meeting room? If you have an empty meeting room, think about approaching that family and saying, I'm sorry, I know it's chaotic and we'll have your room as ready as soon as possible. If it is simply too much to be out in this space because it's so noisy, we do have a quiet space if you'd prefer to wait there. Um, it's just, you don't have to say anything about, hey, your kid's having a meltdown or that you're making too much noise, noise or you're disruptive. Instead, flip the script that it's about the space, it's not about the family. And if you think about if any of you have ever had small children children who are having a moment and the embarrassment and the anxiousness that it causes within you, the family will most likely be grateful for you to give them a space to retreat to out of um, the chaos of a busy lobby. So just something to consider. Also social stories. Um, and if you have a PDF version of this, uh, this presentation, you can click through the social stories and it will take you to an example. What a social story is, is basically a narrative of what someone will experience at your property. A lot of uh, large attractions have them. Um, one of the ones I may have linked here is Kennedy Space Center. And so what this is, it basically says what's going to happen when you uh, arrive at a destination. You will park your car, you will come into the building, you will check in, you will be given a key, you will take the elevator to your room. It's a way to remember that part we talked about. It's an unfamiliar surrounding a couple of slides ago. This is a way to make that unfamiliar surrounding all of a sudden familiar. It's usually sent in advance of arrival, available on a website for, for folks to download before their arrival. But once again, that's an above and beyond, but something to consider if you're interested. Food and beverage pre-ordering. Keep that incremental revenue in your hotel. If you have a family checking in with this program, offer to pre-order a dinner for a certain pickup time so that they can keep dinner in the hotel as opposed to going out to eat if you offer food and beverage. Um, yeah, that may have seemed like a crazy foreign concept a couple of years ago and now it's pretty much the standard to be able to uh, pre-order your food and beverage and pick it up. Next, think about specialty menu options. Um, early on, if you read the, through the definition of autism, one of the things that's discussed is that it is also accompanied by gastrointestinal issues, the most common of which is a gluten allergy. So if you have a um, breakfast that's included with your at your property, think about gluten-free options to make sure you have um, something for all guests. And then this may fall onto your folks at Visit Concord, but we hope to create a local rack card that highlights the properties that are sensory sensitivity aware and trained, the attractions, restaurants, really anyone who is participating in this program so that you can reach out to families and really sell Visit Concord as a sensory sensitive destination. So next we will talk about the feedback that we have received so far from this 
program being active in my state of Alabama. It has been active now for two years. We've trained several hundred properties, a couple of hundred families have utilized the program, and I would say that 90% of the feedback is thank you so much for taking the time to learn about our kiddos. Um, this was an incredible experience. We were afraid to travel before, but we're so grateful. Um, we loved all the sensory kit items. They immediately came in handy. They're, they're, the feedback is just unbelievable, even when things don't go perfect. Even when I've had properties that forget to offer the sensory kit, families have just by and large been absolutely grateful that we as an industry in the hospitality world are trying, trying to be aware, trying to make a difference in their lives. So this is just some general feedback that we've received. And, um, and, and it's interesting also, in addition to this type of feedback, I've had communications from people outside of my state who have through the grapevine or through social media heard about this program. And even though they're not eligible for paid for practice stays, have asked about where they can find the properties that are participating because they want to come and stay there and support them in their efforts just with their own um, with their own spending dollars. So there's really a need and a demand out there for this uh, to exist in the world and to bring in new customers that you might not be serving already. Here are a couple items that just for you to make note of, they're not part of this program, but I just wanted you to have them in your toolkit of information. The Sunflower uh, Hidden Disabilities Program is a lanyard program um, where folks can pick up these lanyards from various airports, airlines, uh, large institutions that part participate. And it's really just a silent heads up um, awareness tool so that you're aware that the person wearing it has some sort of hidden disability. Now this is not autism specific. It can be anything. It can be Crohn's disease. It can be fibromyalgia. It can be PTSD. Anything that is unseen. So just know that if you see one of these lanyards that means that the person you're working with has some sort of hidden disability. On the right, you see the autism awareness ribbon with the puzzle pieces. Those are sort of the symbols for autism or the puzzle piece and, and this ribbon. Sometimes you'll see mom wearing earrings or a necklace or a tote bag or a t-shirt that has autism awareness on it. This is once again, just a silent kind of um, nod to you to let you know that maybe you could offer this person a, this um, sensory sensitivity kit because they clearly know someone or love someone who um, has an autism a diagnosis of some sort. Okay, there will be resources on the Visit Concord Accessible Concord website that you can utilize for yourself or for families or just for reference materials. There are autism travel blogs from family bloggers who have someone in their family on the autism spectrum and they talk about their travel experiences. There are TSA screening cards where folks can get an adjusted screening based on their sensory sensitivities when going through TSA if they're someone who has issues with being touched. Um, there is a flight simulation available through the ARC national uh, where you can certain airlines on certain given dates will do a special program where families with someone with autism can come out and go through ticketing go through tsa board a plane tool around the runway and it's a pl practice flight experience so that they can take away that unfamiliar surroundings component of perhaps a future trip with their loved one and uh, they'll just be great tips for traveling with kids with autism all sorts of resources that you can either direct families to or utilize yourself for additional training. And then if you have any questions, you are welcome to, this is my contact information specifically, but I know the fine folks at Visit Concord have been through this training many times and can help you answer any questions, or if not, they can certainly reach out to me and I can hopefully help clarify anything um, that is a brand new something that has come up. And um, lastly, I wanna share this little slide with you and I recommend uh, if, you're, if you have the PDF version of this presentation to print this out and keep it at your front desk, particularly if you have group business coming in where you may have individuals with a disability. You know, if someone does not have someone in their family or in their life or a, a coworker with a disability, sometimes, as a, a particularly young people, it can be uncomfortable knowing how to communicate with someone with a disability because you don't want to offend them and you're really not sure what the protocols are. And that's what this is for. This is the language around disability and how to communicate with someone with a disability. Really the most core thing to remember is that they are absolutely people first and everything else is secondary. So as long as you stick with 
conversation as though they are a person. They are a person with a disability, a person who uses a wheelchair, a person with epilepsy or with cerebral palsy, um, then you can't go wrong. But this is just a handy dandy little cheat sheet um, for everyone to utilize at the front desk uh, in case it uh, just gives them a little reassurance on their communication with a guest with disabilities. But lastly, I want to thank everyone for taking part in the Accessible Concord program. I am honored to be a part of you launching uh, this initiative and absolutely hope to serve as a resource to help you continue to grow, to put guests in your hotels, and create an experience for individuals and families uh, like no other. So thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Congratulations on starting this important initiative. Thank you.